Hi, welcome to this look at the March weather trends. In like a lion, out like a lamb. Is there going to be any truth in that piece of weather folk lore this year? I'll begin by taking a look at the first week or so. In fact, I'm going to run this animation a little bit further forward than usual. It starts at 21 GMT Thursday the 3rd. At the outset, there are outbreaks of rain in central areas. It's drier generally to the east and in parts of the south. Now, it's a messy pitch which really starts to shape up. High pressure begins to have more influence as we go through the weekend. And into the early part of next week, it looks like we're going to be pulling some colder air in off the continent. This is Tuesday the 8th of March, and by then there's a southeasterly feed across the UK. But the Atlantic isn't far away. Weather fronts here look as though they're going to be making their way towards us and bringing a return to more unsettled and potentially milder weather. So let's see what happens if I just continue this and run it through to its end. That is indeed the case. The Atlantic starts to return. Weather fronts push eastwards across all parts of the UK. It becomes quite windy, quite wet. And by Sunday, uh, Saturday the 12th, it's, it's, it's an unsettled picture across the whole of the United Kingdom. If this is correct, the cold incursion from the continent doesn't really amount to a great deal. But here's the uh, air temperature chart from that GFS run on Saturday the 12th of March. By then, the UK is under mild air, pushing up from the southwest, and the cold block is much further east and south. But looking at a chart for the same time from the European ECM model, it's a very different story. The blues over the UK there are indicating cold air. And on this particular computer model evolution, that would lead to the potential for sleet or snow to develop close to the boundary as milder air begins to return from the southwest. I think the greatest risk of significant snow would be in the northern half of the UK, particularly over high ground. But the, the breakdown may well be quite slow, quite messy, and it's a distinctly different scenario to that one which the GFS is showing, which has the Atlantic coming through a lot more quickly. Those two charts really just highlight that there is a good degree of uncertainty about how, cold, how much of a cold air is going to make its way to the UK, how long it's going to last for, and in turn, what the likelihood of snow is. Also, to take a look at the temperature evolution using the MOGREPS data, this is the UK Met Ensemble. Through the, this, through the first days, temperatures start to dip, but it's not particularly cold. Maximums look to be around 6 or 7 Celsius in London, so in southern England. However, towards the end there, by the 9th or 10th and the 11th, there's a huge spread of possible outcomes. Some of the runs are bringing in that very cold block of air. Others have the Atlantic returning. It's a lot milder, as I've been explaining. It really does just lower confidence in the forecast uh, details for around this period of time. So I would say from around the 9th of March onwards in particular, it becomes very uncertain. It's a similar picture in the north. The chart here is for Glasgow. Once again, there's a wide spread later on. In the shorter term, it looks as though that cold rare moving in, moving in from the east isn't, isn't going to be having much influence in the northwest of the UK at all, which is what you would really expect, because as I say, it's going to be pushing across southern and central parts of Britain. I think another thing to look at is the wind gust chart, because if, if the high pressure block starts being squeezed and the Atlantic begins pushing back in, the strength of winds will be increasing. And that again is something which is showing up here later on from about the 9th or 10th or the 11th of March. It's a number of those MOGREPS runs are showing windy or even very windy conditions developing in the London area. 
Right, well, that's quite a complicated picture which is taking shaping up uh, from around the 9th of March onwards. There is a possibility of sleet or snow. I think on balance, it's low to moderate in the south and it's greater the further north that you go, particularly over high ground. Nonetheless, I'll continue by taking a look at the medium term using the GEFS data first. London and uh, Southern England here going out to 16 days ahead. Air mass temperatures across the top. Well, they are generally close to the average, the thick purple line there tracks the thick black line. The ensemble mean tracks a 30 year norm. But there are a number of runs early on through the second week, so around this March the 9th, 10th, 11th period, which is what I'm flagging up, that are going very cold indeed. But it is a minority of them. I think therefore most of the GEFS runs are backing the GFS operational rather than the European ECM operational, suggesting that the colder incursion won't be sharp and it won't last long and therefore the risk of snow is significantly reduced. We can see that along the bottom looking at the snow row numbers there 214 remaining very low indeed. The maximum value can be of course is 33 so when you're seeing only two or three other runs forecasting snow to fall at that given time it's suggesting the chances of it are minimal to say the least. But there are more rain spikes showing there going, going further forwards and that in turn supports the more changeable westerly pattern returning. I also thought it would be worth taking a look at the European ensemble plots to see how they compare to that GEFS. So again for London showing forecast air mass temperatures. The period in question here from the 9th of March onwards, the, it, it suggests a it suggests that there are more cold runs in the European Ensemble than there are in the GEFS. The thick purple line again using the ensemble, again indicates the ensemble mean is below the 30-year average more, uh, more definitely than it was on the GEFS and it takes longer to recover. In my experience the European models tend to be a lot keener on continental blocking than the American GFS, GEFS does. So in turn, what does that mean for the likely outcome? Well, my, my gut feeling has, has always been that the European models overcook the extent of blocking over Scandinavia into the North UK, and the North American models tend to slightly undershoot. And we may well end up with something in the middle, which isn't really very conclusive, but perhaps more of a cold spell than the GFS is showing, but less than the ECM, the European model is currently going for. Just taking a look at the precipitation from the European model, quite dry here between the 7th, 8th and 9th of March, then the spikes begin to appear. It's really from the 11th onwards that the London precipitation plot ticks up significantly, and even on this it's pointing towards more of an Atlantic influence returning. Unfortunately on these charts I can't currently show the snow row, in other words I can't say how many of these spikes are actually predicting there to be snow rather than just rain because it's, it's a separate parameter from the forecast model which I don't yet have access to. Nonetheless on balance I think what the European ECM is suggesting is as I have said a longer cold spell than the G EFS and a greater chance of snow. Even so, the Atlantic will be coming back. It's just a question of timing. Going up to Glasgow, looking at the GEFS, the ensemble mean there stays below the 30 year norm for most of the 16 day period. What that is pointing towards is milder air pushing up from the southwest across southern and central regions but struggling to make it all the way to the north and as a consequence of that the snow row values are much higher 
reaching uh, 15 around the 16th or 17th of March. And there are quite a few precipitation spikes. It's indicating a moderate to quite a high likelihood, I would suggest, of snow falling in the north, at least on some days through that period as the as a milder air tries to return. It may well be, as I say, quite a messy picture which develops. The GEFS pressure mean chart for Friday the 18th of March points towards the Atlantic coming back, high pressure to the southwest of the UK, the Azores high pressure, and a west or southwesterly flow pushing up into Scandinavia. So again, as I say, offering support for that transition back to a more, more usual positive NAO pattern with our weather coming from the west or the southwest. Well, with all that uncertainty during the, I would say, the middle third of the month, what happens in the longer term? As ever at this range, it really is just about trying to identify the general direction of travel. Will it be warmer or colder than average, wetter or drier? There are other warnings about the data which is used here. With that said, here is the pressure anomaly chart for the week beginning the 16th of March using data from the GEFS 35 day model. Negative to the west, positive to the east. So high pressure somewhere over here, areas of low pressure here to our west, to our northwest towards Iceland. The UK, perhaps at this point, maybe in no man's land to an extent, although I think if this was correct, it would be pointing towards an Atlantic influence across our shores. So quite mild conditions potentially uh, beginning to take a grip at this stage. Going forwards a week, so a week beginning the 23rd, yellows across the UK there indicating a positive anomaly and they're extending over much of Europe, a weakened westerly flow but does that mean it's going to be colder or not? Could we be pulling in some cold air from the northeast? Still probably not if this is correct. It looks like the high pressure is going to be centred over continental Europe. And if anything, we may be feeding up some rather spring-like conditions were it to be correct up from the southwest. Just taking a look at the air temperature anomaly charts. So about 1500 metres above sea level, these are valid for week beginning the 16th of March. Reds are above a 30 year norm, blues below it. Quite close to where things should be over the UK when averaged out across the week as a whole, maybe a little bit below in the west, a little bit above in the east. It's not really suggesting support for a continental flow at this point, at least not a cold one. Week beginning the 23rd of March, a weak positive anomaly across all parts of the country, the pinks and reds there pointing towards that, even across Western Europe temperatures at this level, slightly above the 30 year average. Popping down to the ground level to see what that means for two meter temperatures, so the ones that we actually experience. The chart here's for London. Through the second half of March, the Red lines which show the ensemble mean uh, maximums and minimums are staying above that thick black line which is the 30 year average suggesting above average temperatures therefore quite a mild second half to March if this is correct very spring like conditions I would expect at some at least on some days. Going up to the northwest to Glasgow the positive anomaly here is weaker the red lines are bisecting the thick black line more. Doesn't look cold though through the second half of the month. Even here I would suggest that temperatures would probably be a little bit above the norm. So to summarise the month, week one it's a mixed start that it then becomes mostly dry. It also turns colder, especially in the east and the south. Week two, a good deal of uncertainty though here because it looks as though milder and more unsettled 
Weather will be returning from the Atlantic, but the timing is very uncertain. There is a possibility of transitional snow, particularly in the northern half of the UK, where the cold air could hang on for a while. Through the rest of the month, more typical, so wettest in the west and the north, still a risk of snow over high ground. Later on, it could become drier in all areas as higher pressure builds again. And in terms of temperatures, generally milder than the average when taken over this period as a whole. So, uh, there we have it. In like a lion, out like a lamb. I'm going to let you decide. It does at least look as though there is a potential for something wintry for a time. There could be some snow around. The 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th of March would be the favoured period, I think. The greatest chance of that is in the northern half of the UK, but I wouldn't rule out snow even in southern and central regions for a time. Although, on balance, I think that probably will not be the case. Maybe something like a 20-25% chance of it happening. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.